Hey everybody, we're going to be doing a series of holiday cooking videos. The first set, I'm going to be cooking a ham, some green beans, and sweet potatoes. The second series is going to be the turkey, dressing, and cranberry sauce. And the final series is going to be some holiday desserts. We just want to show you how you can still have some of your holiday favorites by swapping out some ingredients, slimming them down a little bit, and they can still be enjoyable to your friends and family that you have over for dinner. The ingredients for the glazed baked ham are ham, pineapple juice, whole cloves, and brown sugar. This is Splenda brown sugar blend. It is blended with regular brown sugar and Splenda, so it does have sugar in it, but the good thing is, is you use half as much as you would of regular brown sugar. I'm going to start with about a half a cup of the brown sugar and about that much of the pineapple juice. Well, maybe even closer to a cup because you want this to be a glaze that you can base the ham with. Just mix that and let it hang out. And then the cloves. You want to put them in a separate dish since you're going to be handling um, meat. This is a fully cooked ham, but it would be really good with a ham that you actually have to bake. But at any rate, you want to put your cloves out in a separate dish so that you're not touching cloves that you're not going to be using for your dish after you've touched the meat. This ham has a paper coating on it, so I'm going to remove that. You just want to go along it probably about a half to a quarter inch deep, about every inch or so. Just scoring the meat. And then go back along diagonally. then where every intersection comes in, you just want to stud your ham with the cloves. Then in a roasting pan, Put your aluminum foil down, set your ham inside of it. You can use orange juice with this or pineapple juice. And just drizzle it over the top. Bring your aluminum foil up and close up your ham. But you want to make it to where you can get into it easily because you want to baste it about every 15 minutes. My oven is set at 350. I'm going to put this in there for about 20-25 minutes per pound. This is a five pound ham. I'm going to let it go for the first 30 minutes so that the glaze can start to get hot and then I'm going to baste it every 15 minutes. Okay, the ham is cooked for about 30 minutes and I'm going to baste it. You want to go ahead and get it out of the oven, bring it up on your stove top to baste it. If you stand there with your oven door open, you're losing heat which will affect your cooking time. You could use a baster here, but I'm just going to go ahead and use a spoon since I gave Corey the baster to play with and I can't find it. Close your hand back up and put it back in and then you want to start basting it every 15 minutes. The ham is cooked for about an hour and 15 minutes and I'm just going to baste it one last time. I'm not going to cover it with foil. And I'm going to put it back in the oven and let it brown up. I'm going to check it after 15 minutes. If it's not brown enough for my liking, I'm going to turn the broiler on for a few minutes. All right, this is the last, this was after the last 15 minutes, and it's plenty brown enough, so I'm not going to worry about putting it under the broiler. I'm just going to baste it one more time. I 
and I'm going to let it sit for about 15 minutes before I move it or even try to cut it up. For the green beans, we're going to use fresh green beans, minced garlic, and extra virgin olive oil. And to prepare your green beans, just get a handful of them, all going in the same direction with the stem side on one side. Just trim those off. After you've gone through and trimmed all of your beans, just give them a good rinse. A couple of tablespoons of the olive oil in the bottom of a pan over medium-high heat and let that heat up. Okay. My oil is heated up, I'm going to add my green beans and there's some water in there from where I rinsed them and strained them. And that's okay, I want them to kind of steam a little bit, but it is going to crackle. I'm going to turn these around in the olive oil, get them coated, and I'm going to let them brown up a little bit. You can see where some of them are starting to brown up and blister. That's exactly what I want. At this point, I'm going to add the garlic. About a tablespoon of garlic. I'm going to knock the heat back. So that I want the garlic to burn. I got that on medium low. I'm going to cover it up and let them kind of steam. Green beans are tender enough for our liking. You'll cook them until they're tender for your liking. At this point, I'm going to top it with a little bit of salt. Forgot to list that in the ingredients, but and then I'll plate it. The ingredients for the mashed sweet potatoes are sweet potatoes, fat-free evaporated milk, your choice of margarine or butter, and salt. I'm going to do these just like I would make regular mashed potatoes, but since sweet potatoes speak of holidays and they're better for you nutritionally, that's why I'm going to use these. After the potatoes are peeled, you want to just go through and dice them in similar sizes. Since sweet potatoes are hard to cut, you especially want to make sure that you're trying to work with flat surfaces as much as possible. After you get them peeled and cubed, cover them with cold water, put a lid on it, and bring them up to a boil. Once it comes to a boil, take the lid off and let it boil for about 12 to 15 minutes. Check it with a fork and see if it's tender. If it's not, then go a little further. The sweet potatoes boiled for about 12 minutes. They are fork tender. I've already drained them and put them back in the hot pot over the still hot burner. The heat is not on, it's just still hot. That way it will draw the moisture out. I'm going to add a couple tablespoons of my margarine, about a half a teaspoon of salt cream. I'm going to start with about a half a cup and then I'll mash it and see how it looks. That's about the consistency that I like. If you want to further accentuate the sweet potatoes, you can add a little bit of nutmeg or cinnamon here.